friends, we are live. Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is Angela R. Sasser tuning in for my evening stream. Last time we were working on the sticker design. So this is where we came up. We collapsed the windows. This is how we ended up with the last stream. We got the July sticker all ready to go. She's looking at orbs. And now we're on the August sticker design, which is this lovely lady right here. That's what I'm hoping to lay in the color flats for tonight. So that's our mission. We're gonna get all the color flats in and colorize the lines to get this ready to finish up like this. And for those who are new to this series and new to my art, I am mainly a fantasy artist. I've written a book on how to paint fantasy angels called Angelic Visions. And this series that you see here, for those who are new to it, is called the Birthstone Goddesses. And this is a series of images which I'm um, going show you right here. You can go see more of this at a website I'm going to throw into the chat here. My main website is just my name, angelasasser.com, but the gym goddesses are special enough that they require their own website. So you can come to gymgoddesses.angelicshades.com and explore the whole gallery of birthstone and gemstone goddesses. This is all Art Nouveau style because I love the style. I think it's beautiful and I want to bring a little more beauty into the world while I'm here. So you can see each one has a month here and each lady symbolizes both the flower for the month and the gemstone. So today I'm working on the old ch cute chibi sticker version of this gal right here. You can read about all her symbolize, symbol, blah, symbolism online. But basically, she is the goddess of peridot and poppies. And for her, I went with an Oban-inspired theme. Since you can see the Oban lanterns here, they're actually from above, as if she's floating in the water. For those who didn't quite catch that. I tried to do something new with this one and different. She's called a goddess of the river because she guides souls on their journey to visit their loved ones during this part of the year because that's what Oban is all about in Japan is welcoming the spirits of your family back home and spending time with them before they return to the underworld it's all very touching and I just that really struck a chord with me and that's what inspired this lady right here And she has sort of a Japanese shrine maiden priestess look going on, but also mixed with Mary's cowl, which you can see reflected in her fashion design, which you might see it scrolling through on the image feature down on the bottom. This alternate design has more of the Mary influence as there is a day dedicated to Mary during August. Anyways, that's all info. You can even see the thumbnail drawings in the image feature on the bottom of the screen. So keep an eye for that, enjoy. And feel free to surf that online gallery. So I've got this image up in Photoshop so I can color pick from it and start laying in these colors. So this is always a fun therapeutic part because it's just laying in colors and making sure everything has a good start. So let's get to the drawing. It's almost late tonight because I played hooky to go see Godzilla with my mother. I didn't realize how long Godzilla was. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not called Godzilla. It's Godzilla. And it was a fun movie. I, I had fun with it. Sometimes you just need a cheesy monster movie in your life. So 
So let's get this ready. I'm gonna go ahead and combine all of my lines onto one layer. That way it's easier to fill in the colors by selecting the negative space. All right. So many layers. All right, we've got all the lines isolated. I'm going to leave all the rest here just in case I ever need to change anything. Hey, Echo Sien! I haven't seen you in a long time. It's good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. What have you been up to all this time? Let's see, if there are ever any audio issues or anything like that, you guys feel free to say something in the chat and let me know. Streaming is still a delicate art that I'm getting the hang of. And of course, if you have any questions while I'm working, feel free to say something in the chat and I will get back to you as soon as I look up and catch up with what's going on in the chat. Let me get some music going for me. All right, color time. I think I'm gonna make the background all water themed like I have it here, so blue and green. Ah, I see. Well, it's good to have you around for the chat. I know everyone's got to make that for the chat, for the stream. Now everyone's got to make that cheese. Thanks for spending your downtime with me. forgot I like to widen the selection by a pixel just to make sure it overlaps and catches all these corners that the selection sometimes misses and even then I still might have to go in and fill them in but the expanding the selection by one pixel tends to help get all the overlaps that I miss it's a hot tip oh it's hot though Roasting over the Cintiq today. Just making sure our AC is actually turning on. Whew. Still wasn't as bad as last week, where it was a record heat wave here. It was like 105 degrees. And it was just torturous to be working on any hot kind of screen. Ooh, she's gonna take a bit longer than the other little gym ladies have. Little gym goddesses, she has so much more detail. I think this was the one where I just went nuts. I was like, do all the props. And yeah, I just, I still use the magic wand tool for selection and keep it at a pretty low tolerance. And then I just, uh, you know, select, ex modify, expand, and that helps a lot. You can even contract, too, to make it smaller or fade with feather. It's very handy. I'm sure there is some clever way to do it. Oh, I need to do it. I'm sure there's some clever way to do it, but this is the way I do it. It's kind of embarrassing when I'm streaming sometimes. Someone will be like, Angela, you could have done it this way and it would have been easier. And I'll be like, uh-huh. 
since Photoshop still isn't like my main mode of doing art, it's kind of my secondary mode. I'm still a watercolorist at heart. Color pencilist at heart. I love my traditional mediums. Even though it's fun to be able to do this too. For these smaller sections that I'm just gonna paint them in. Because they get really hard to select unless you zoom in really close. had a good week. This week has gone by fast because as soon as I got back from vacation, I had to work late. Because <laughs> I took vacation off during a kind of a big launch time. I've got a Kickstarter coming up. Ah, that's what I forgot to do. I was going to plug a little bit about the Kickstarter because it's related to this series. So real fast, shameless plug time. There's a Kickstarter coming up! And it's for enamel pins! So I'm re slowly revealing what each pin for each birthstone goddess for the summer set is going to look like. So first day of summer, June 21st, I'm going to have these three pins go up on Kickstarter. So if you want to collect one or tell all your friends so they can collect one and I can make pretty pretty pins, that would be awesome. And also for signing up, you get a little free coloring page here of my Lady of June. So I'm gonna put that in the chat too. Well, I keep pulling up Kickstarter or uh, Discord. But yeah, let me put this in there too. So if you want to be signed up to be notified of the launch, you can. And let me tell you, it, designing enamel pins is very addictive. Like, I had so much fun doing this kind of cameo, vintage cameo inspired style. Mm -hmm. I'm just so hyped because I feel like Art Nouveau really shines when it's used not just for paintings, but also for jewelry, which is like a, a, also a part of it. It's like jewelry and furniture and all of that. Hopefully that link went through this time. Last stream we were having some issues with the links not going through the chat. So let me know if that these links aren't getting through to you guys. All right, back to coloring. The shameless plugging is over. At least for now. But yeah, I went to vacation at the beach. I could have used a few more walks on the beach before coming back here though. It's just so soothing. That I never get to see the beach. It had been years since I'd seen a beach. I didn't even get to paint any of the beach. Like, I wanted to do some plein air painting. <sighs> Just means I have to go back sometime. Let's see. I think I will make these ripples yellow like the lanterns. Expanding the seduction. <laughs> I'm glad it doesn't seem like shameless plugging, at least. I always feel bad plugging my stuff, like, oh no, I'm gonna scare them away by hustling too hard. I swear it had more ripples, but yeah, I got, I got them all.
these lanterns were really fun to draw. I, I just love lanterns as an element. They're just so intriguing and romantic. So must paint more sometime. But yeah, Kickstarter launch come in, so that means a lot to do on my end. Like design all the ads and make sure I've got all my quotes to the companies in. It's all a very grassroots effort. It makes me wish I had minions, but I'm still working on those minions. Once I get all rich and famous, I'll have minions. But till then, I can't fire myself, so I'm kind of stuck with me. Oh, I forgot to expand it. It's the only thing about doing things this way is I forget. Forget to expand. It's funny how desaturated this blue and green looks here, but it feels more saturated in the original painting. Funny how that works. So is anyone drawing with me tonight? I know I have a few people who come in and they draw. Or are you just tuning in to hear my relaxing voice? Okay. I am calculating that this one's probably going to take like three hours to do all this color flatting. Three or four hours. The other ones have taken like maybe two, two and a half. But this one has so many more elements to it. Oh yeah, uh, Shadow... Shadowbringers? Echosian's talking about the new expansion coming for Final Fantasy XIV, which I've played on and off. I haven't played in a long time, though, but I think I might be coming back for Dancer because Dancer is like the coolest class. And so is, what, Sword Breaker, I think it's called? Gun Sword Guys. I run a Mikote in that game, a male Mikote named Raja Silvertongue. <laughs> don't don't ask me. I, I don't know what I was thinking when I named him, but I'd love to see him dancing his kitty butt off. It'll be hilarious. And they get chakrams, which is pretty cool. I need to draw my kitty man more. I modeled him after a Siamese cat, so he has like the brown markings and really bright blue eyes. Ooh, I'm gonna have a lot of layers in this one, I can already tell. I'm actually really comfortable with red mage that's like the main class i like to run because they are so swag and i am shallow and will play a class just because it is swag i mean i just love the look like the whole chevalier look is so cool so it's the first class that i felt like that class is me because they didn't really have like anything swag like a thief until later or ninja or anything like that so 
I was running a bard before Red Mage came along. I never finished a ninja, but their quests were cool. Yay for Catman! I was just so happy that they finally had the male Catman because I used to- my first MMO was Final Fantasy XI and the Makote were all female and it was because their males were really rare and they kind of kept them protected in, in their cities. So when they finally rolled without the uh, male M Makote or Mithra as they were called in XI, I was all like, oh, forbidden race. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen Blue Mage. I've seen videos of the Blue Mage, but I've not ran them yet. They are indeed super dapper. I could definitely play one of them. There's so much to play. I'm excited to come back when I finally have some time and some extra moolah. Oh my gosh, there's a gnat. There's a gnat in here. You can't stop me from drawing, gnat. Yeah, that veil looks super brown. Let me play with a hue, because I'd rather it be a little more on the green side. But I use one of those Daniel Smith watercolor paints that shift in color slightly from green to gold. It's this beautiful granulating color, but it doesn't quite translate to um, digital that well. Yeah, just a little greener is all we need. Hey there! Thanks for the well wishes! I'll catch you around to prop gaming! I think I'll probably end up with like 55 layers. I'm gonna bet on 55. Well, maybe not that high. Well, I'm going to bet around 40 layers. Make your guesses in the chat. And yeah, I might come back and add... When I do the shading part, I'll probably come back and add some color shifting into the veil but for this stream we're going to focus on color flats just so i can get the selections really tidy it makes coloring them in the next step much easier Oh, and it's the veil section right there. Sneaky, sneaky gaps. All my summer ladies were pretty big on the eyeshadow, it seems. Did I miss any skin? I did. I missed her neck here. I'm basically coloring, even though there's veil here, I'm gonna do a trick later on to make that veil look translucent. So I'm coloring everything underneath the veil first. I actually rarely use gradients except to do some very subtle lighting effects because I feel that 
using gradients is very mechanical looking. So depending on the type of picture I'm painting, I prefer not to use it if I want it to be more naturalistic looking because they're too perfect. And I feel like that handmade mistakes, as it were, make things look a lot more natural. Is she missing eyebrow here? <laughs> I feel like there needs to be some eyebrow here. I will come draw that in later. I actually had to leave her veil out of the design for the enamel pin because it just got too complicated for the pin. But you guys will see her later because her reveal's coming up. Her pins reveal's coming up in a few weeks before the Kickstarter launch. And she's one of my favorites. Like she just came out so lovely. Can't wait to share those designs. <laughs> So many pretty things. Did I miss some spots? So yeah, before doing sheer, I'm just gonna color beneath. See, I don't even need Nizumi much anymore because I've been using Photoshop smoothing now that they've integrated smoothing into their engine. I think this is her ear. <laughs> so it happens when you don't look at something that you drew a while ago. Let's draw in that eyebrow too. Just needs a little hint of eyebrow because it looks odd. Now that I can see all my inking overlaps. other layers, other line layers, and hide them so I can actually tell what I'm erasing here. This overlap is, is getting to me. It must go. Ah, I'm on the wrong layer, of course. There we go. Closing all these loops is helpful for doing the smart one selection as well. I always gotta make sure my loops are tidier. Although trying to make sure all of these lines are perfect is a surefire way to insanity, so there's a point where I just have to let go. Because these are going to be shown at sticker size for the most part, so I don't have to be too perfect. But I'm terrible at not being a perfectionist, so... Still working on that. Let's do the hair. I always like to have the hair and the skin layers nearby each other.
I still got that gap there. Let me fill that in before I forget it. I see a finger I forgot to fill her too. Three fingers, oh no. Weird, tiny, chibi fingers. Ah, and a lantern. I forgot the lantern that's floating above her hands. The other thing I'm excited about with those enamel pins too is that I'm doing something, I'm researching doing something really cool right now, which is to dangle gems off the bottom of the limited edition version of the pins. And that's gonna look so sweet. I'm hoping we can do it. Fingers crossed. I just have to gush to that my husband gifted me an iPad Pro, which I had been lusting over for a very long time. Oh, what is this gap? Ugh. But yes, he gifted me an iPad Pro, which I used over vacation a bit, and I've been learning how to draw with Adobe Sketch since it, it comes with my Photoshop. And it's pretty cool. It lets you make time lapses out of your image. Like it just makes one automatically for you. And that is so fun. I'm just having so much fun just making time lapses. But then also it shows me how much I fiddle endlessly with everything. She has the most Betty Boop face out of all of them. She has that square head going on. But yes, back to the hair. Oh no, I missed the loop again. I see you, loop. There you are. Okay, I feel better now. There's another one. And again, just coloring beneath. Oh, I missed a gap here. I'm just coloring beneath the veil where I know it's going to be sheer. We'll come back to it later and add the sheer element on top. It's a, it's a really cool trick I like to do. There's supposed to be a tube here. What is this supposed to be? I don't think it's her hair. Ugh. I think that is supposed to be a, a bead from her headdress. <laughs> I have to fix the line art there because that's that's doing crazy stuff. We'll just make this part of the bead instead of her hair. 
I noticed I didn't give her a ponytail either. So she doesn't have a lot of hair. I guess that's fire hazard when you're working with lanterns. But then so is a big shiny veil. actually had this really cool idea to paint another image of this character in the for the art book I'm planning some alternate images and this gal's image is gonna be the same goddess walking on the surface of water and some of the lanterns are gonna be floating on the water next to her but others are gonna be in the air and it's gonna be a little more surreal and painterly and dark. I'm kind of excited to take a more surreal angle with this. I started to be as surreal here, but I just want to push that further and really run with the glowing soul lantern theme that I've got going on with this lady. This series started to get much more fantastical as it went along. Which I'm not complaining about. I I like that I started to get more fantastical. It made it more mine than being just an homage to Muka, who was the artist that definitely inspired this series. Let's put on your makeup. Actually, I'm gonna remove the line here because I I don't I feel like for a coloring page or something it's nice to have that line there, but we don't need that line, so I'm gonna take it out. Actually, I'm gonna clean up the edges of the eyeshadow first and then I'm gonna erase the line so let's clean up this makeup lower the opacity so I can see underneath guys have any questions or comments or anything you'd like me to talk about feel free to throw up a topic there in chat otherwise I'm just gonna ramble randomly about whatever comes to mind so this is your golden opportunity to control my rambling mega My characters wear way more makeup than I do, but it's so fun to draw. I need to draw more characters with makeup. Like crazy makeup so I can just go insane with like iridescent shine and stuff like that. Alright, now we're just going to mask out this line right here since we don't need it anymore. And I like using layer masks because they're non-destructive. So if I want to paint back this line, I don't have to redraw it. I can just undo the mask like that. It is the bestest. If I want to clean up this makeup line, because it's looking a little jagged. I thought my hand was super steady when I did it, but 
That's when I can use the select tool and clean it up a little. Boom. Cleaner lines. I also want to mask out the lines to the pupils. Which is again a detail that's nice to have there for coloring page information. But for the colored versions of these, I will show you the last one I did, which is August. Not August, uh, July. <laughs> Too many characters. I masked out both the eyes and the nose so that those details could be softer. So I'm gonna at least gonna mask out these pupils. Close. Trying to get into the habit of using the lasso tool for selections like this because I will sit there and try to do everything by hand. Being the traditional artist that I am, I always do everything the hard way. Actually, let me do the other eye too. I can see where I didn't quite get these lines correct. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. So fiddly. Choosing the wrong layer. All right. Color those pupils using my liner as a guide. As with all of my ladies, she has pupils that echo the color of her gemstone, so she will have peridot colored gemstones. Or pupils, that is. And peridot's this lovely kind of greenish, yellowish. I tried to echo that color in her whole color scheme. So it's like about here in the greenish yellowish color scheme. So now we can mask out these pupils.
hoping my sniffling isn't too loud. I'm trying to sniffle very quietly. But Georgia is full of pollen that wants to infect my brain. And give me whistly boogers. always look so creepy in the color flats. Like soulless flat eyes. Yeah, burying into your soul. on our right seems a little weird. I think I'm gonna make it bigger. This happened with the last one too. I was like fixing the eyeball forever. It just needs to be a little bigger. I feel like that's all it needs. Just a tiny tiny adjustment. So pretty. These alternate chibis have been such a fun way to show like different angles of the same character. Oh, I see a part in the sleeve. I see you, Gaps. You would not escape me. Anyone's tuning in from Facebook right now, since I think I'm simulcasting to Facebook as well. I can't actually answer or type back to you guys. I don't have the right chat plan for that. And I'm cheap, so I could just answer you guys verbally here in the video. So Facebook people, I promise I'm not ignoring you in the chat. I'll just have to answer you verbally. Oh. I might upgrade my plan one of these days. If I get super popular on, on Twitch here. That way I can afford to pay for the Facebook integration, but that is something that cost a moolah. One of these days. Okay, let me fix that one weird overlap I had going on in her headdress. Now, what was I even trying to do? Because I don't even see where that third one Looks like it's supposed to come over her ear and come out. <laughs> Physics, what is? What even is physics? Oh, I need a break already? Blah. An hour goes by so fast, you guys! Okay, it's not quite lining up, so... Eh. Ah. 
I'll take a break soon, computer. You fix this and then I will take a break. Like a micro break. I can take a break, computer. Alright, there's my sheep. Alright, time for a stretch break! Well, this keeps me from turning into a broken neck lady, like from the horror movies. I'm gonna turn on my lamp too because I'm sitting here drawing in the dark like a mole. And this just keeps me from having neck issues because I like to stay in the same position way too long when I'm focusing, which is not good. And normally I'd go do some yoga or clean or walk around for the rest of the eight minute break, but we're just gonna skip that for now. It's still good to sketch, but I'm gonna skip the rest because that'll be boring for you guys to stare at this for 10 minutes. Okay. Oh no, the odds have started. Get those lips. Those tiny, tiny lips. Seems like she's got sort of matching lipstick and eyeshadow here. I actually cannot wait to do some cyberpunk characters because then I can go crazy with like the bioluminescent tattoos and weird mecha makeup like cyborg makeup i don't know i'm just i gotta draw some hot couture cyberpunk people soon i've been gathering pinterest references for it forever so i gotta make that happen sometime she got this pointy vampire nose i'll have to fix that later <laughs> August is judging you. All right, what's next? What's next? Let's go for that headdress. Where I can see where I missed a few tiny, tiny corners. Sometimes that expands trick doesn't get the very, very corners of things.
Okay, headdress time. Head beams. That's good enough. So many details. So I caught a new show, since I always like to tell you guys about inspiring shows that I've seen. Ugh, did I miss another gap? Ugh. So I'm watching Nosferatu on AMC, which someone on AMC really likes horror stuff, like just really weird horror, which is definitely my bag. I'm into psychological horror stuff, and Nosferatu is kind of crazy, like, down to earth. So the premise is basically this weird boogeyman kidnaps children and there's this girl who's developing her psychic powers to find lost things and she's gonna end up finding the missing child that the boogeyman the Nosferatu guy has taken and it's so delightfully weird I'm like who greenlit this I love it but I'm like this is so weird who had friends that greenlit this weird shit for TV. But I also just finished watching The Terror, which is another horror series about the Franklin expedition to the Arctic Circle. It's like a really famous lost expedition where they, they sent ships to try and find the Northwest Passage and then they never, they were never seen again. Like everybody died. And it was this big mystery for a long time. And of course, the horror take on that is that a monster sort of plagued their expedition and bad stuff happened. I won't spoil it too much. But yeah, it was, it was interesting. It's a very slow moving series of slow crawls aren't your thing it might not be your bag but all the imagery in in the arctic was really beautiful strangely enough to say that about a horror series but yeah some someone on amc has some really interesting tastes which i'm i'm kind of digging be These are almost the same color as her skin here. How funny is that? You wouldn't think that by looking at the skin here versus the reflected light I've got going here. I did something really different with this one, the original painting, where I was trying to show that she was underwater so everything's kind of desaturated. So that makes color picking kind of interesting so I've got some weird stuff going on here where the beads aren't quite overlapping in a convincing way that I'll have to fix it's like if I just draw a little edge of the bead coming through here I think that'll fix the issue and here I'm just use the hue slider to make this somewhat different from the skin Maybe just maybe more blue and gray or bluish gray. That works. I also started watching Good Omens, which is so fun to see that 
Neil Gaiman's weird stories are finally seeing adaptations. I know he's wanted to adapt things for a long time. I'm still watching American Gods, which is so delightfully weird. And I, as a, someone who's into folklore, I really love picking out all the different gods that were being alluded to before they were revealed as, you know, Kali or or um, Anubis. And it was just really fun. It was like a trivia game for me. I'm trying to be a good wife and watch that with my husband, but he's so slow. So I definitely gotta get back to that one. I loved it. But it seems like that one, American Gods, paved the way for Neil Gaiman to produce more shows. So seeing Good Omens, which is something I read years ago, is really exciting. It's such a cute, quirky story about an angel and a demon trying to hold off the apocalypse because they they just think planet Earth is cool and they want to keep eating sushi and living among people because they found they actually kind of liked it. So it's a very cute, quirky story about the apocalypse. I'm actually hoping they do Sandman next, because, oh man, Sandman is still my favorite thing that Neil Gaiman has done. It's just so fun. It's got a, a good helping of folklore and Greek gods and gods from all sorts of pantheons, but also some of... of his unique gods that embody more abstract concepts like dream, desire, destruction. They all start with D and they all have like unique appearances that reflect their aspect. And it's this sort of this fun quirky mix of magical realism and drama. It was one of the first comics that I ever really got into. Besides X-Men and one of the first weird comics I really got into, which weird is definitely my favorite. Hey, it's an Aiden. Welcome to the stream. Always good to have you. Okay, I've fiddled for like 10 minutes with this. Time to fix. Time to color. It's so easy to get to rambling and then forget that I actually need to move on from noodling. But yeah, Sandman is awesome. Everyone should read it and hope for a TV show because it would be awesome. So how you doing, Aiden? You working out any art? Here we go. I have finished the weird, nonsensical tentacles. Oh, I like that. That would make a fun manga name. Nonsensical tentacles. That's a comedy starring your tentacle monster. Which I'm gonna keep up with bad jokes like this unless you guys give me something to talk about. So please do suggest topics or ask questions in the chat. I just call this one head bangalies.
did I have any gold anywhere? I think the trim is the same gold. Oh, I see where I forgot a line of her kimono here. Maybe a little hint of a trim here too. I will fix that shortly. It was so hard to find a way to simplify this complicated kimono of hers. Oh god, what's that? Is there more gold trim? No. I think her sleeves are supposed to be sheer too. But I didn't draw them as sheer in the chibi. Mm. Nah. Too much effort. I'm gonna leave them white. Yeah, this outfit was a pain in the butt because it had a habit. Kimonos are meant to do this, but it's it, they're meant to kind of straighten the body and you're not supposed to have much of a waistline. So that made a lot of the flow I was trying to get into this piece kind of dead now when I was drawing it. So I had to rely on the veil and the ribbons to do all the motion of the composition. I'm not sure how successful I was. But she is painted now. I am not repainting her. When I keep looking at these pieces I finished uh, within the past couple of years, keep seeing things I want to redo in them, and that way lies insanity. Must not redo. Let's see. We fix the kimono line. Oh, wrong color. Too thin. There we go. Perfect. Um, let's see. Would it be too busy for me to put a hint of her shirt here? Let's do the sleeves. These sleeves are this really, really pale green and with a bluish tint to them. Greens are one of the most difficult colors to do in watercolor. Because if you get the temperature of the green wrong, it just looks murky and muddy and gross. Or they don't quite... They don't quite work out. So this watercolor piece here was very challenging. Let's 
It's like her dress is coming up through her sleeve. <laughs> okay. There's so many weird mistakes in this one. I must have been tired by the end of it. Seems way darker than this over here. <laughs> Let's see. Now the contrast stands apart from her veil. I think I know what I'm just trying to show like there was some sheer sheerness here, but it looks strange, so I might erase it. I think I will erase it. Okay, next up. I'm gonna do this base kimono finally. Too small of a gap there to sew it. I'll have to get it manually. Shock of green. So randomly, oh my gosh, I'm almost to the end of Dragon Age Inquisition. It has taken me so long to get through that game because I keep, <laughs> I'm bad about 
committing to conversation choices. So I'll like play through one conversation thread with a character and then replay it if I don't like what happened. <laughs> and sometimes it's just interesting to hear what the characters will say to you if you pick a if you pick a topic that, you know, is interesting but you might not have really gone with. Sometimes you just don't know if they're going to be funny, snarky, or like a total asshole, which is a problem I have a lot because I like to play snarky heroes. So yeah, it's taking me forever. I'm doing all the side quests, which I'm almost regretting now because it's just taking so long. I love it. There's so much to explore, but also it's just kind of overwhelming with the amount of stuff there is to do. So many things to explore. So many majestic fantasy landscapes. I am almost done with the war table operations too, which is kind of insane. But I'm somewhat of a completionist with games like that. I love I love me some in-depth RPGs. What's sad is I even had a small staycation where I stayed at home and played it for a couple weeks thinking I'd beat it, but that sure didn't happen. Oh, I can't spell kimono. Where am I? Jin. That green kimono that really sells her look, I think. some tiny tiny corners Alright Echo, it was really nice for you to tune in and say hi. I hope you have a nice night or day. I'm not sure of your time zone. Catch you later. Rest well. loved these decorative knotwork that I did for her kimono front. I really want to utilize that in another design sometime. Just add such a unique touch to an outfit. And kind of insinuates that there is a very meticulous ceremonial way that someone might tie them. It's a nice character detail, I think. Like the nature of tying them is part of the 
spirituality aspect of her outfit. Which sounds like it could be part of the purpose of a shrine maiden. Drop box, I know you're almost full. <laughs> Gosh, ever since I got almost full, it will not stop spamming me. Like, that won't go away until I press it. Because it's freaking bossy. Go away, drop box, I don't need you. Actually, I do need you. Just leave me alone. I need to delete some stuff. I'm terrible about just stockpiling until I get this stupid warning and then have to actually clean something. Yeah. working on this for an hour and a half now and I'm not even to colorizing the lines yet. I knew she'd be a doozy. Do I want the veil to show through here? I think I do. Let's color that part of the veil that I left. Veil, 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 veil. Since the veil is showing behind the sheer material here. Forgot to fix the bees here, too. All right, all fixed. She's getting there slowly but surely. I forgot the bubbles. The bubbles, the bubbles. Let's get the bubbles real fast. That's an easy one. Bubbles. Trying to figure out where this stem is going. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'll fix it later. We'll get to that. Looks like this drawing killed some brain cells. Back when I first did it, which I'm not surprised. 
I should probably kill her brain cells right now. I didn't need those anyway, I guess. I think I want the bubbles to be a bright blue. That'll be more fun. Get all these gaps in this. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention another movie we watched this past weekend. So, if you've never seen Happy Death Day, it's actually a really adorable horror comedy movie. It was a surprise, surprisingly good movie about this one girl who keeps waking up and having to live the day over and over again until something kills her and then she keeps waking up and it it's also happens to be her birthday so the whole movie she has to find the mystery of who wants to kill her and also why does she keep having to repeat the same day over and over again so the movie we saw was the sequel called happy death day to you and it was actually pretty good Not as good as the first one because they you know they tried to explain why and it just kind of once you start explaining it sometimes it kind of loses its luster but they did what they could to explain it and also try to bring some new things to the groundhog day formula so we enjoyed it it was a passable sequel I still have to figure out what I want to do about this stem. I think the stem was leading to this flower, but then I kept going for some reason, so. I think it is a mistake, so I'm going to shorten that stem. And reminder if you guys have questions any questions about art life whatever give me something to talk about in the chat or I will just ramble or possibly fall asleep because these night streams are I'm not going to call them hard because I'm actually somewhat of a night owl. But a, a night owl who's been sort of forced into a morning person's box. 
then that's never fun. One of these days I'm gonna try, like, if I can, to flex my schedule to be more at night. Which is something I heard that Neil Gaiman does where he'll, you know, he'll work at night at like, you know, till like 2 a.m. or something, then sleep in, but get up and take care of his kids and sort of spend time with the family in the evening still. And then after they're off to bed, he goes back to work. So he kind of takes advantage of that creative time, like he knows when he's at his most creative and he takes advantage of when that time is, which I know not everyone can do if they have a work schedule, like a traditional job schedule that they're sticking to. There's something I've been meaning to try as long as I'm in control of my work schedule, which I'm fortunate enough to be right now. I just like to try and, and follow my husband's schedule so I get the most time with him that I can. But if I can sneak, like, seeing him at night, or not sneak, but like flex so I can see him still, but work after, then the challenge would be actually getting to work because I have a habit of just kind of winding down in the evenings and not really getting anything else done for fun other than video games. Because, you know, I want to relax and spend time with my hubby. But I'm still figuring that out. Whew, almost there. We got the border flowers to do. This is one of those pictures where the background image totally covers the really cool poppy themed window behind her, which I want to show off real fast. Like, mental break for a second. I want to show you guys cool stuffs. So the actual window behind her looks like this. It's got these big poppies and then these swirls of water behind it. So it's very dreamy and it's almost like smoke, but it's water. It's a very cool design, one of my favorites from the whole series. But alas, she is blocking it. But it's on my agenda. Ooh. It's on my agenda to actually do each painting of the windows by themselves without a figure. Which would be, a, a, I think, a fun thing to do. Like, just feature the windows and the flowers. So that's kind of the next leg of my journey for things I want to include in the art book that's going to happen far, far down the line. And then I can use them in the calendars as well. Slowly but surely getting there. <laughs> oh, I've started the yawning and now it won't go away. But we're on the border flowers, so almost, almost there, you guys. I love drawing poppy pods too. They're just a lot of fun. 
And there's such a romantic element to have in a piece. They just visually are really cool. And poppies have so much symbolism behind them. So much history as well. Excuse my sniffling. Next day, it colorize the lines. That's always fun. So, just wrapping up these these uh, last few elements. Got these bouncings. Actually, I forgot the little centers here are green as well. Can't forget those. It's a nice little shock of color in the middle of these flowers. Poppies makes me, always makes me think of another TV show I need to finish called Into the Badlands, which I think is another one on AMC. I guess I'm big into the AMC channel lately, <laughs> but it's about, it's kind of a poca, po poca, poca, a post-apocalyptic future where technology's kind of regressed to the steampunk level and people are living on there are warlords that have sort of divided up the land and everything's done in this like wuxia style kung fu sort of flair to it. It's so cool. And one of the warlords, his biggest export is opium. So his whole theme is poppies and all of his enforcer dudes are dressed in this poppy blood red. It's, it's very cool. I've seen like two seasons and I hear that it's actually ending so I actually need to catch up on that. There's a lot of that one that I've missed. There are actually some very cool comics that they made for that show that I think you can get online at AMC's website. The art was really cool in them, so I definitely recommend that for those who are into Into the Badlands. Though I swear they cast people who kind of look like Game of Thrones people. So they could kind of have this Game of Thrones-esque appeal with all the, like, politics of the warlords and stuff. Like, the wife of the warlord looked just like Caitlyn. Caitlyn Stark, that is. There was a couple other lookalikes in there, too. It was like, oh my god, it's like I'm watching Game of Thrones, but not...
Wish you don't, huh? Slappy, you faded until you zoom in. Almost there, almost there. We could do it. We're almost to the end. Not actually, we still have to colorize the lines. We're almost to the end of laying in the color flats. And we gotta celebrate those small victories when you're drawing something for hours. Hours and hours. So I see like five people who are viewers. What are you doing to, while you watch the stream? I'm always curious to know. I've had people tell me that they're knitting, they're writing, which is exciting. I love to see that people are making things while they're watching the stream. Makes me feel like a, a muse on their shoulder, encouraging them to create things, which always makes me happy. So I hope y'all are being creative tonight. Let's see, I've gotten knitters, I've gotten writers, I've gotten artists who are working on their own things. I've gotten people who are doing telemarketing while they're working, or while they're watching, which is pretty cool. Your multitasking amazes me. Oh, not stroke. I want to fill. Yee, I love that poppy red. It just pops out from all of this really desaturated green. So pretty. Poppy market. I'm gonna zoom in closer for this one because these are kind of a pain to select. Oh no, I can see corners I missed. We're gonna come back and fix those. Oh, I actually forgot at the beginning to talk about what these are actually for. Other than I just enjoy drawing chibis and wanted to take my serious fine art ladies and turn them into chibis, which is something I do for stress relief sometimes. But in this case, I wanted to do something special for my Patreon patrons. Those are the people who pitch in like a dollar or more to help me, help support me each month. They unlocked a goal on Patreon to make these stickers. So I'm actually finishing these off so my Patreon patrons will get this as a free gift. I'm still working on the details about who gets what gift, but most of my patrons will probably be getting some stickers. So that's gonna be fun. I just have to finish the whole set of them. That's the challenge. There's a lot to do. I think I've got two, three. I've got like four or five more to do. Oh, I've lost count. 
You think things won't take long, but then they do. Okay, woohoo! The center is all done except for the lines I need to colorize and some of the veil sheer effects that I need to come back and do. But let's finish up the outer part first before I dive back into some of those fiddly sheer effects. Now what color do I want to do this trim? I feel like it's sort of Japanese wood. So she has this kind of Japanese theme. I think like wood carved edges for this with that kind of water theme. So we're gonna go with a light beige, like it's made of wood. And then these are little gems on the outside border that are going to represent our peridot in this piece. patterns with this. There we go. And I might tweak these colors. Just want to get them laid in first so then I can easily tweak them with the hue slider. I like it with that bare wood look. Now for the gems, which we're going to just color pick from the eyes, since that's our peridot. She has the peridot eyes. I wonder if this should be the lighter trim here. I'm going to make that the lighter trim. Like the trim's coming beneath the gem, holding it in place there. It looks weird that it color shifts. Breaking the logic here of the trim. I 
There we go. That works better with my brain. And then maybe if there's a little line here, like an edge to show that this inlay shape actually is below the gym. Which we're going to do with a symmetry tool. There. I will stop throwing my stylus randomly. Symmetry. All right, this this tool is the coolest and I love it. It's actually how I drew these borders to be as symmetrical as they are. Let's see about here. It just creates the symmetrical line for you. Just kind of mesmerizing to watch. Boom! Symmetry! I loves it. Okay, my internal logic brain has been satisfied that the gym is on top of this shape in the background instead of like hovering weirdly or this inlay not looking right. I can't explain why it looked right. It, does, it just does. You'll just have to trust me. We just have to do the fiddly shear effects on this veil. So the way we're going to do that, I'm going to make a layer above the hair and the beads and the skin and all these other little effects here. And we're going to call that the sheer veil. So I'm only going to select the areas that are overlapped here. So everything covered by her veil here, we're going to select. by her veil. Aha, a little bit of edge here. I don't think anything else is covered by it, so then we're just gonna cover it with this with the veil's color. So it just looks plain right now, but the trick is that then you lower the opacity Oh no, did I try it on? I filled it on the wrong layer. Let's fill it on the proper layer. Okay, so now the trick is that by lowering the opacity of all those parts we just colored, we can control just how sheer the veil is. Without actually changing the opacity of the entire veil, which would look weird. So, ta-da! Your cheat for a veil trick. Or for sheer veils. So next is this cowl, which is also made of sheer material. So I 
I think it's just basically that same kind of greenish veil, but slightly lighter. So we're going to go up on the color picker. But my computer wants me to, to stretch, so I guess I better listen to it before I turn into a haggard, broke neck lady. So stretch time, folks. Stretch with me. We're not actually taking the full 10 minutes. We're just doing the stretches for a couple of minutes and then we're going to get back to the piece. But I like to still at least do these stretches. Also keeps my eyes from staring at something too close because that can really mess with your ability to have normal vision. Like the, the eye doctor was telling me there's a lot of people, young people my age, who are actually developing that nearsightedness that you don't get until you're older and need reading glasses. They're developing the need to have glasses earlier on because of looking too closely at computers. So it's good to train your eyes to look far away for a minute. Because otherwise I'm staring at something that's itches from my face for hours on end. Alright. That's good enough. Call this the sheer cowl. So again, we're just selecting all the places that the cow is covering. A bunch of little fiddly areas that I'm just going to manually color in because I don't feel like trying to select them with this tool. I'd have to zoom in way further. Forget to expand the selection. Oh, I can see the chunks I missed. Let's fill those in. To make it sheer. Let's see if I can make it lighter and stand out from the background veil a little more. go. I like that. OK, 
Okay, I think the base colors are all done now. So here comes the really fiddly part. And holy cow, it's 9 p.m. <laughs> Two hours to get these colored flats in. And now the fun part. We get to lay in some colorization on the lines. And I'll show you what that looks like so you can see what I'm going for. Do, 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 do. Uh, August. No, June. I'll show you June. Oh, no, it's not too late. So, with June. Everything but the outline has a subtle color to it that's not quite dark as black. And that's because I wanted these to echo the art style of Art Nouveau. So you've got that really heavy black outline to mimic the way that Art Nouveau looks. Which I think I have maybe an example of. Maybe I don't. I might not. In here maybe? Nope. I can show you real fast. Art Nouveau, quick lesson, because I need to stop looking at the picture for a second. Art Nouveau has this really, like you can see here that thick black outline, and that just makes everything in here soften, and it also adds visual interest when you have very pale, flat colors like this with a subtle gradient to them, or subtle shading. It just vogues really nicely together so that's what i'm going for by colorizing the lines adding a bit of visual interest a bit of depth and trying to keep that art nouveau flair to it so we're gonna keep lady of june up here for inspiration and i've said this before but i'll say it for new people it's also a trick that disney uses on movies like mulan you can see that they actually colorize the lines and that just brings an ever so elegant touch of visual interest to the piece, to the animation. So we're just leaving that outer line black. Actually, could just use the lasso tool and select these lines. But I'm having just fun moving my stylus around right now, I suppose. Plus the selection tool can get finicky sometimes when you're trying to do all these little shapes to try and select these lines. So a lot of these lines are going to be colorized because her veil creates such a huge shape that covers everything in here so the only major black outline is going to be the big veil. So 
the other random thing I saw. Death Stranding launch trailer for the video game that Hideo Kojima's been working on forever. Oh, it looks so crazy, like, such a spectacle of weirdness and interesting imagery. I've always been a sucker for his imagery. So I'm excited to see what Kojima's gonna do on his own now that he's not part of Konami. I think I said this last stream, but I'm saying it again because the trailer was cool and I already want to cosplay one of the dudes with like the gold, like in all black with a gold skull mask. They were just really memorable looking. And I thought it was a cool spiel. A cool shtick that they had. I want to know what's up with everyone having like weird teardrops on their faces. I just want to know what's going on. So I'll play it just so I can know what the heck. And probably even then I still won't know what's going on because it's Kojima. My theory right now is that it's, and I think I said this last stream, but I'm repeating myself just in case anyone else didn't catch the last stream. I theorize it's some kind of post-apocalyptic earth and humans are just trying to survive in this hellscape with like angels and demons battling around them. That's my theory. And I'm pretty intrigued since angels are particular thing that I'm interested in. You know, my name being Angela and all that. I think it was kind of destiny that would happen. Hmm, I think I want this green line darker. I made it a little too light. So we're gonna select it. And darken it. Because I don't want it to be straight black, but I do want it dark enough to that when I color with shading later, the shading won't be darker than the line. Or rather, yeah, I want the to be able to make the shading kind of dark without overwhelming the line. It'll make sense later when I'm trying to color it. It's funny because it had like a blue outline on the original figure. I'm not sure a blue outline will work on the chibi lady. Actually, we can try it and see. Let's see if I choose this dark blue. What happens? Let's try it. We're going to select this green again. Quite bones with it, so let's 
go back to dark green instead. Go ahead and do the the eyes. Things get darker. There we go. And her weird vampire nose. I think this combine can be even dark. Next, the hair outline. with the hair color instead. Kind of like how I did with June. She has the dark outline of her hair instead of her skin dictating the outline color of the eyes. That makes sense to anybody but me. you guys have questions I am here to answer them this is your opportunity to ask me live anything you know within within reason give me stuff to talk about Otherwise, I'm going to talk about random stuff. Like a cool comic I started reading over vacation. Because I I like to read weird comics. So, I picked up a little comic called Demon Slayer. Because I really like the art of Phobs. P-H-O-B-S. 
Fobs does some really cool stuff, and I heard that Fobs did a comic series, or yeah, did art for Demon Slayers, so I said, hey, I'll check this out. So like the first series is done by another artist, but the second series is done by Fobs. But I, as being the completionist that I am, I got the first series anyway. Which the art is pretty cool still. And the premise is about a demon slayer who... Something... I'm still trying to learn why, but something happened to where their body doesn't quite work right. Like they were, they were paraplegic, I believe. And they're basically hunting demons because they, you know, they have a holy mission to hunt demons, but also they have to put the dust that the demons turn into into an hourglass to keep their life going. Like, if the dust runs out of the hourglass, the demon slayer dies. And he has these rad tattoos that were made in heaven or something like that. Something weird like that which give the Demon Slayer the power to wield any weapon as if it were forged in heaven so they can slay demons. It's pretty cool. It sounds really serious, but it actually has this quirky sense of humor to it that I enjoy. So yeah, check that out. That sounds like your bag. I read it on Comixology. It's like my favorite reading app since it integrated with my Kindle library. So all the comics that I read or that I bought through Amazon, they show up in my library there. And they have such amazing sales. And I like saving money because I'm a horrible cheap ass. So many noodles! The other reason I like it is it has like a guided reading view so you can, if you're on a small device like a phone you can just tap on the panel and it'll zoom panel by panel for you. That's one thing I really like about it. So if I ever make a comic, I might see about publishing on there since they take, they take creator submissions there too. And that's kind of a pipe dream of mine is to do a comic one day. The backgrounds are scary, y'all. I don't want to draw backgrounds. Maybe I can just use like screen tones and cheat my way through drawing backgrounds. Almost done with noodles. It's a little corner. There, it is gone. So many little corners that probably won't show up in print, but I know they're there, so they must, they must die. Okay, next set of noodles. 
I'm gonna have to carefully color these gaps and not color over the gold lines. That's the only tricky thing about coloring lines like this. Is to get overlaps since it's all in the same layer. So probably I will only get as far as color flooding. That seems to be the pace that I'm working at is one stream session to lay in all these color flats and colorize the lines and then another stream session to finish it up with shading and all that goodness. seeing things because I've been staring at this piece too long See, I have four quiet lurkers. You're not talking to me in the chat. You should say hi. If you want. It's just nice not to feel alone. So alone. Hey! <laughs> Yay! It's a psychine. I do not feel so alone anymore. What you been up to, Lenny? You know, I never finished that shrinky dink that I started to do with you. <laughs> it is just sitting on the couch and I'm afraid to touch it. Because I have to like color it and color pencil. <laughs> Yay, people are alive. I was beginning to feel so alone. Talking to myself. Yay, I'm done with noodles. Thank God. Oh, still the dress, still the dress to go. I can do this. I got this. Oh, I feel you on the brain deadness. I got like 10 hours of sleep and I still feel tired. But I think that's just having like immediate deadlines as soon as I come back from vacation, it's like, I need some transition time, so I'm not in my brain is just still in vacation mode, I think. But hopefully since I got my big deadlines for Kickstarter things mostly done, then I can just relax. Or at least take things at a normal pace instead of an so oh my god deadlines pace.
I think I need more tea to get through this though. We're almost there. We're almost there. We can do this. We got this. Uh, this is lying dark enough. Mm. No, I went too dark in this line. He's good. He's good now. So I'm trying to think from today, what monster was my favorite? <laughs> it's probably easy for those who know me. It was Mothra, of course. Mothra was from the movie that I watched earlier today, for those who, who missed the fact that I saw Godzilla today. Mothra just had this angelic music whenever she came on screen. I didn't actually know that Mothra was queen of the monsters. I'm kind of like a super casual Godzilla fan, so I, I didn't know half the shit that was flying on screen in the movie. <laughs> but my husband in the chat, he's he's the big Godzilla fan. So yeah, Mothra is the coolest because I really like moths. And she was a little badass. Like, I wouldn't think a moth would be able to do much, but just kind of fly at people and get dust on them. But she put up a good fight. She had, like I said, the angelic music whenever she was on the screen. <laughs> they just made every moment with her majestic. Not enough of Kong. Didn't see much of Kong in the movie. Which I, I got attached to him in Skull Island. It was pretty cool in that one. But I'm thinking maybe the next movie will have more Kong, which would be pretty cool. I still have music playing. Good. I'm always afraid the music's gonna turn off when I'm not looking. <laughs> That's happened a couple of times. <laughs> so many greens in this piece. Feats. 
see, I'm trying to make it to where it looks like there's a glow coming from the inside window. So maybe a really vibrant line here will make that effect happen. too close to the other line. Yeah, I like that. Bright line seems to do the trick of making it look like it's glowing from within. There. Well, suppose at the end of these I should put together some time lapse. It would be really fun to see these come together quicker. Especially with all this line colorizing. This is definitely the longest I've taken to color the lines on one though. Which means I'm gonna have so much fun with the the rest of the autumn lady bleh, the autumn ladies because they've got a lot more detail than the the ones like from the earlier part of the year. I think I just started to get more inspired with these and have more unique ideas. So I started adding more objects to tell their stories. Which isn't a bad thing, just means these later ladies take a little bit longer to come together than the earlier ladies who have simpler prompts because I just kind of did sort of a straightforward, this is a goddess with a clothing that has a flower. They definitely got more intriguing as they went along.
Godzilla, I swear, Kevin, in the Godzilla movie, one of, I, was there like a Cloverfield monster snuck into there? Because I swear one of the monsters looks like the Cloverfield monster, and that was like a cameo. But I could be mistaken, it could just be that one of the Godzilla monsters kind of has that same look as the Cloverfield monster. If, if Kevin is still here in the, here with us. Or I'll just go in the other room and ask him when I'm done streaming. But I swear there's a Cloverfield cameo and I'm not crazy. Or it could just be the, the Godzilla monster with the little arms. Oh, he is similar. Okay. It's been a minute since I've seen Cloverfield. But they had a very similar design, like head shape and arms and stuff. Ugh, thank goodness. Oh, not at all. Now do I want to colorize the ripples? Uh, let me see what they look like with some colorization. Could look cool if I made the ripple lines like firelight. I'm gonna test it with this one ripple patch and see if I like it. Okay, let's see what this looks like when I pull the zoom out. About making this darker, more saturated. Yeah, I think I like the darker orange. Still gets the glow across, but it also... See, now I'm gonna look at the Cloverfield monster. Hold up. Cloverfield monster. Spoilers, I guess? Okay, yeah. It's different. It doesn't have the multiple arms. hide the ant line sometimes I forget that they're still activated <laughs> or that the selection is still overriding when I'm trying to color but it's nice that you can hide the ant lines no no I believe you but I just wanted to see how similar the designs were but they weren't as similar as I thought this kind of weird spindly monster with that like insect like head. Yeah, 
and the like praying mantis esque limbs. I was basically looking it up to see how close my memory was. <laughs> it is not your job to give me grief. That is my parents' job. It's your job to make fun of me for cheesy shows that I watch. Let's see, maybe white lines on the bubbles? How do white lines look? They look fun. Lines of the shoes, what? Hey, bubbles. Oh gosh, okay. Oh, it's done. We just gotta paint the overlaps and the flowers. I said if I could rest. Oh, nope. I still gotta do the border, too. <laughs> uh, okay. I can do it. I got this. Oh, wait, yeah. So, this nerd here in the, in the chat, I nag him about putting his shoes in places where people are gonna trip over it. So I'm like, Kevin, stop putting your shoes in the middle of the floor. And so his vengeful ass, the next morning I wake up and he's placed all the shoes in the apartment in a line reading, leading from the bedroom to the front door. <laughs> and I couldn't even be mad because that's a, that's a great, that was a great prank, my dear. That's the best prank you've done. Bravo on that prank. I still haven't gotten you back for it. One of these days when you least expect it. <laughs> that was not an invitation for you to talk that prank, dear. Oh no, Photoshop, have you frozen? No, control S, control S. Okay, Photoshop has frozen. Did you catch up now? Oh, thank God. Ah! <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing? Okay, that was super weird. Uh, alright. So, I might have you in here later. Or, you know, when you're free. To check the computer out. Because I think it's... That was a little weird. Or it's just a little possessed, perhaps. Just a little possession, that's all.
cool. Thank you. We're going to save again. Just being cautious after that weird little error. I don't think I could take this file getting corrupted right now. I've been working the past few hours on it. That would be a computer throwing moment. Getting all these overlaps. <laughs> then we would be done except for the trim. So we'd be almost done. Almost done. There is an end. Oh, so randomly, I watched that uh, Terminator trailer again, Terminator Dark Fate. I didn't realize it was Linda Hamilton, like the original Sarah Connor, back reprising her role. Which is pretty awesome. I'm excited to see her back. She's like up there with Ripley for me. Just badass sci-fi women. Though I actually rather liked Amelia Clark as her. I thought she did a good job. It'll be interesting to see where Linda Hamilton goes with the Sarah Connor role. Because I was always kind of disappointed in, in how she got written out in... Uh, what was it? Which one was it? I think it was Terminator 2? No, it wasn't 2. It was... um. One where they go to find her grave and it's full of weapons and I can't remember which one it was because there's been like way too many Terminator movies. I can't remember if you mentioned it to me either. But somehow I didn't pick up that it was Linda Hamilton back reprising her role. I was too busy thinking about how this was a cool cover song for a Bjork song. Which that was a pretty beautiful cover of Hunter. Neat dramatic instrumentals to it. Zoom, zoom, zoom in, we're almost there. Ah. <laughs> we're almost done.
Zan, if you're still around the computer. I have some Proco homework stuff that I, I meant to send you, but now I can't remember if I sent it to you because I got majorly distracted with a bunch of stuff I had to do today. But yeah, I have, um, okay, I didn't end up sending it. I have a bunch of, not a bunch, but I have a few blog posts I did where I talked about my Proco homework and shared some of the exercises I did. I figured I'd send them to you if they ins helped inspire you for the class. Looks like I got as far as... I got past Robo Bean. And I started getting into like the 3D building, thinking in 3D basically, but then I... Oh, I just ended up getting distracted and I need to get back to it. Those are some good exercises that he teaches you that are just good for artists to do just regularly, like every now and again, do some gestures because I feel like gestures are what keep an artist from having really stiff, boring poses. Yeah, I hope you can get some sleep. Sleep is good for you. Sleep is your friend. But yeah, I was pretty meticulous with the Proco homework. I would basically challenge myself to do a hundred of each exercise. Like I wouldn't move on until I drew something a hundred times and then I would move on from the lesson. Because I was trying out that whole theory of if you draw something so much you'll basically get to know it really well. But it also meant I'd I spent a long time to do anything. So I probably just lost steam because I was trying to do so many exercise, or rather do so many practice images for each lesson. But you do learn a lot. I will say that for Proko. Yeah, I see some corners that I need to fix up. there. I think we've done it. Whew. This one, whoa, don't close, don't close. This one was a doozy, but we've done it. Hooray! 
<laughs> so with that next time the next stream which will be on monday 2 p.m eastern unless something goes horribly wrong but hopefully it won't so monday 2 p.m eastern i'll be streaming again where i'll be painting and shading this gal here but i'm done for tonight so thank you to everyone who joins me if you enjoyed the stream tonight and want to pitch in a dollar for patreon where you can get sneak peeks and behind the scene looks and little patreon perks you can pitch in as little as a dollar at patreon.com forward slash angela sasser i also put free articles up there about art and tutorials and stuff like that so it's worth following even if you don't pledge to me and if you're a Twitch user, you can just hit subscribe. Amazon Prime people get a free subscription each month. So subscribing to my channel actually gives me a little kickback, which also helps too. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go and play the Endless Void that is Dragon Age Inquisition and then go to bed. So I hope everyone has a nice night and I will catch you next time. Goodbye for now.